Hello and welcome back to Castle A Symphony of the Night, Part 14. Where we enter the land of the broken weapons. Uh, this is where you could possibly farm the chrysogram, right? Yes. In fact, that guy right there, the Shmoo, is the one who drops it. And you can only find Shmoo in the inverted castle. You can only find him in this area. Not this specific room, just this specific area. Yeah. Now, uh, how broken is Chrysogram? Because I've never actually managed to get one to drop. Picture hitting the button once and attacking four times in quick succession with a very powerful attack. Like Dragon Ball Z type fast. Yes. Anyway, if you haven't figured out the theme naming yet, you'll figure it out when we find the third of the enemies here. Well, anyway. well they're Scarecrows. We've been attacked by Tin Men now. And finally, we have the Lions. Okay, that was pretty cool. For Tin Men, the, uh, to kind of like the death animations, the, the way they fall apart, that's actually a pretty neat death animation. So, uh, where are the flying monkeys? Uh, I'm gonna call Shmoo the flying monkeys. Meh. That's the closest you're gonna get in this area. Turns out one of the flying monkeys in the movies were called Shmoo. Who knew? <laughs> anyway, the other enemies in the area all drop really powerful equipment anyway. Wait, wait you sure it's Shmoo? Could be Shmo. S-C-H-M-O-O. -O. Shmoo. Shmo. The guy who dropped the chrysogram. That too. Anyway, Scarecrow here drops the Motosama sword, which gets stronger as you kill enemies that bleed. And it has no upper limits, but it takes a lot of enemies to do that. You remember when video games used to be creative and imaginative? Yeah. Those were some good times. Wait, we are missing Dorothy. Eh, no one cared about Dorothy. Why wouldn't you? And a neutron bomb? Are you fucking kidding me? It's not that good. Anyway, the battle air gains power as your game clock increases. It gets one attack point for every hour on your clock, up to 99, because the clock stops then. Hmm, so even then it's not as powerful as some other weapons. That, and let's face facts, I've only been playing this game for two hours now, so it's got attack power of two. Eh. I love games that do this sort of thing, but then there's that. Uh, I hate to make a reference again to Final Fantasy V, but, uh, like, one of the most broken weapons of the game has a really steep stipulation similar to that, and that's the chicken knife. It gets more powerful the, the more times you run from battle. And then there's the opposite of the chicken knife, called the Brave Sword, which is only as powerful as long as you don't run away from battles. And it's actually more powerful than the maxed out chicken knife at the start. Yes. Anyway, the lion drops the best fist weapon in the game called the Frist of Tulkas. And it has two special attacks, a Hadoken and a Rapid Fire Punch attack. Because we love our good old fighting game references. Right. Or... Starlight just increases the power of the sub-weapon cross, but really, the cross costs 100 hearts to use once. I never really liked the cross in any Castlevania game, to be honest. I like it when it's a boomerang, but in this game, it is literally just a cross crush, and it costs 100 hearts to use once. So it's not going to do a ton of damage. It's still going to cost 100 hearts, so you better hope you like what you're getting. My favorite sub weapons of all time is the axes. Actually, I just I, I hate no, it, like it's like one of my biggest peeves in old school gaming is the inability to aim upwards. It's like the struggle to aim upwards, and the axe is like you can do that. And as for you, chaos, what? <laughs> Any sub weapon types you prefer? Oh, mostly the axe or uh, holy water. Yes, a friend. Ah, uh, uh, the holy water, another really good one. Yeah, even then, I still prefer the axe. Anyway, the final enemy here, the Tin Man, 
He doesn't drop a weapon. He drops the Mojo Mail armor, which just increases the power of your spell casting, actually, instead. And gives you a good buzz. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, you say Mojo Mail armor. I'm going to make a pot joke eventually. That's yeah, fine. Anyway, I don't get any of those drops. Well, anyway, that's all there really is here in Oz. I mean, the Forbidden Library. Yeah, uh... Honestly, not that remarkable, other than the fact that it's a cute reference towards, you know, the movie. Or the book. Uh, wait, was there a... I know there was a book, but was it before or after the movie? Before. before. Long before. There's like 16 of them. What? And by the way, you can't stop Shmoo. Even time itself will not stop Shmoo. Oh, it dropped ramen. That's its common drop. Well, that's nice. I actually like ramen. I know, it's weird. I'm a culinary guy, and yet I like ramen. Go fuck yourselves. I like it. <laughs> that's the entire library, though. There's nothing I hid in that one. I hate these golden skulls. They are just pointless. Well, they do have the use of if you cast soul steel on them, they'll give you health for all the hits, but they won't actually go away. So if you get a quick health recharge, they're there, but that's about it. If you can perform soul steel, that is. I still suck at it. Anyway, here's our hey, next part. The creature. The creature. And sadly enough, you want to be right next to him, because that's all he'll do if you do that. Honestly, I hate this version of Frankenstein in this game. I think it's bad. Ah! Just call Why did you do that, Aussie? It is the creature. Frankenstein is the doctor. The name is Frankenstein. Sorry, but I hate this particular incarnation of Frankenstein's monster. Creature. Yeah, Frankenstein monster counts. I really hate this version of it, especially when other Castlevania games do it much better. You ever play pro freaking Portrait of Ruins creature? Holy shit, now that is pretty kick-ass. Or better yet, uh, probably my favorite, actually, I gotta give it to Order of Ecclesia. Order of Ecclesia is legitimately tough. Anyway, that was the second part of Dracula's pieces, the tooth. Was he wearing it as a necklace? Eh, it just kind of materializes like everything else after you kill a boss. Anyway. The creature, he's made from leftover parts. He was probably using it. Anyway, these are the golden skeletons that dropped the Ring of Varda. And they also dropped gauntlets if you want them. If you want them, but not really, no. Well, let's be honest. Which would you rather have? The one ring to rule them all, or a gauntlet? <laughs> you had to make the reference, didn't you? Actually, the game made the reference for me. That's actually the description on the Ring of Varda. Huh. And yet, you can get multiple of them. Yes. <laughs> and become even more golly broken with a Curse of Grim. I'd imagine... Remember. Oh, God. Isn't that something like... Um... I, I, I get this idea of my head of how broken it could possibly be. It's that bad, at least. If not more so. Yeah, but... uh, It's only for fun, and even then, it's a lot of work to get it. Yeah, but if you're like me and you've got enough of a no life to do it. You've had I'll... that moment, haven't you? I actually have done it already. Ugh. I'll tell you during the boss fight if I were to equip that onto my main file and tell you how long until Dracula dies. Because there's actually a visual point in that where I can tell you when he dies. Huh. Alright, Inverted Caverns. Just as caverny as you remember it, it only inverted. And you have to climb it now to get into it. But you had to go down and eventually climb back up anyways. Now you just do it in reverse. Can you see the theme here? Oh, and also, you, if you want to get back to there, you have to do that stupid trick again. Well, anyway. The nice thing, at least, is that when you want to leave here, it's just a straight drop down. Exactly. Of course, there's still so much you have to do here. Well, we'll let that happen next time. You've got a lot to do. Let's just be clear with that. Yeah, this is going to take a while. <laughs>